Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rifter number 10. Today, we're going to go over all of the articles in the Rifter. I'm going to touch on them a little bit, and then we're going to choose two of them to go into a deeper dive because either I find them more interesting or I have to choose it because I chose part one and we can't have that. <laughs> so there's there's that. So let's go ahead and do this thing. That is fu- that is funny. That that is true. You pick ours no number two because yeah, that'd be that'd be awesome. Number Where's number two? Yeah, we didn't cover it. What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't want that. Like I don't want another missing rifter type thing. I don't need that. By the way, you can donate to Heathen Dog's Rifter account on Streamlabs. <laughs> yeah, Streamlabs goes to you, I think, because that's a that's a yeah. PayPal. You know, Kofi. Oh wait, goes to PayPal. PayPal goes to. All of these pay heathen dog. None of them pay me. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Do that. Do that, everyone. Do that. <laughs> All right. Let's look at the table of contents. There we are. All right. Uh, from the desk of, of, of Kevin Sambita, talking about uh, uh, on why role playing games should be fun and some of the exciting projects coming up. Well, all the exciting projects either happened or were shelved. And I don't want to make everyone depressed by going <laughs> over it. But uh in in this he talks about that uh that role playing games shouldn't be just about the math if you're doing it just for the math you're doing it wrong it should be everyone sitting down having a good time either participating in or generating a good story that's it that's emergent storytelling i don't you know i should grill kevin on that a little bit more cuz i don't know if we agree or disagree because i generally agree with his concept on story but you know, where Mark is very open about the whole idea of uh, if story conflicts with the dice, the story wins. I'm like, no, no. no but no. at the same time, I don't like dice rolls for everything. And I don't like an entire game just based based around sure. min maxing and, di- you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, but the dice create the story. Me as a game master, I have to react to it. You as a player have to react to it. They actually create the story. Dice rolls are important and you shouldn't fudge them and you should go with what they say, even if it does something you weren't expecting. And I'm not 100% sure if Kevin agrees with that or not. I'm I'm pretty sure he's mostly on board with that. Probably. Then uh, Palladium News. Again, this is more upcoming stuff. I'm not going to worry about that because this is 20, 20 something years ago. Uh, and then it goes to page 15, the, the Rift for nine and a half April fools, uh, what? what they did with the, with the, with the Rift for nine and a half is, uh, Wayne Smith. Yeah. Uh, w- was in charge of the Rifter, all the Rifters, hundred percent. He was the Rifter guy and that was it. But Kevin and all the staff kept the Rifter nine and a half secret from him, went over his helmet and got it published and printed. He didn't know it existed until it was already in the warehouse. And Kevin came in with a copy in his hand, slammed it on Wayne's desk and go, what the hell is this? And Wayne went, uh, 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 what? Oh, what the hell is this? I don't, I don't know what this is. I got to make some phone calls like that. And the then, Rifter nine and, and a half is one of the, the best rifters ever written. I know. And, and then, and then everyone started taking, came in the office, started taking pictures of him video. I want to, I want to get a hold of that video, by the way. Of, of Wayne being apoplectic at something that was his complete responsibility and a whole issue came out that he didn't know existed. For folks who don't remember, we covered Rifter 9.5 last week. It's already up there for the videos and so forth. And I've already got plans on how to in, uh, integrate some of that into my games. Like, why, <laughs> why would there be a complaint about this? No, no, it was just a joke that it was put out without his knowledge completely. So, you know, he almost had a heart attack. I mean, if you are the line editor or whatever, that is kind of of a bad thing. But yeah. Then we have uh, Knights of the Dinner Table. Uh, This one, this one, again, comic strip. Funny. Get it. But uh, this one talks about, hey, we're we're taking a break from uh, role playing and we're going to do a regular tabletop game, board game. The only problem is. When you have a, 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 a bunch of characters that are used to working together, do not throw a board game at them where it's cutthroat. It gets <laughs> weird. It gets weird real quick. Feelings get hurt because everyone's used to playing, to playing as a team, and now you're playing against everyone, and yeah, people start yelling at each other. Oh, there are definitely games out there where you lose friendships. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Republic of Rome is one of them. That's, that was the big one when I was a kid. 
You don't you don't play Republic of Rome with your friends. All right. Uh, and then page 19, we have the Palladium Fantasy RPG, The Magic of Science. This article is stupid. Uh-oh. Do not use it. It's made for Palladium Fantasy, and it talks about techno wizard items. Technology. Gunpowder. Steam mm. engines. No. It is a fantasy setting. Magic is so powerful that technology would never emerge. There is nothing that nascent technology can do that magic can't do better. Nothing. Stop it. Stop it. Just I'm torn. I'm torn this, on that. Pretend this doesn't exist at all. It, it doesn't. We're, in fact, we're moving on. Get off my fucking. Well, 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 the, the reason I'm torn on that is because I know people. One who liked to include firearms in the games, but even beyond that, like the more modern kind of like the Eberron crap, you know, for for third edition or the Tinker Gnome stupid stupidity from Dragonlance. Yeah, and you are not behind this. Everything you're saying is no, back in my point. I'm just saying people who do like that nonsense, I can see why it's why it's there. People I'm I'm in agreement. Like I don't I don't like I hate Tinker Gnomes. I hate them. I hate them. I hate them. Yeah, pe people who want magical magic and technology to be in the same world do should not be playing Palladium Fantasy. There you go. Agreed. There's your answer. You're playing the wrong game, dumbass. Get a different game. And then this is one we're actually going to do. Uh, this one's Palladium Fantasy, the Changeling Metamorph. This is a super powerful, super rare changeling that you can introduce into your game, and it won't it won't uh, overpower your game. A lot of custom OCCs and RCCs have a tendency to unbalance a, a game already in session that wasn't built for it. This one does not, which is why it was rare enough. I wanted to, I wanted to go and it's kind of neat. So I want to go over it. The next one, the heroes unlimited, the gestalt power category. Now, uh, if you remember uh, powers unlimited book number two, it talked mm -hmm. about the the gestalt superpower where you have a bunch of people come together to create a psychic construct of the merging of all their minds or a physical construct of the merging of all their bodies. And that's the superhero. It was dumb. It is dumb. And this one tries to help it by making other things that just so happen to end up being dumb as well, except except in this article they have voltron that's right <laughs> you can make volt no don't laugh you can make damn voltron in this and you know these the uh, uh, all of uh, not the car voltron shut up go away hey that one had go better story stupid, go away with the stupid car voltron no we're not talking about that we're talking about the lion voltron each of those lions were useful on their own it was a giant mech in the shape of a lion. It had like, you know, laser beams, giant claws, mega damage, all that cool. It was cool to begin. I'm going with but the you ferrets. Can merge these lions and form a Voltron, right? Awesome. Friggin' awesome. Do that. Because the, the normal physical gestalt is five or more ordinary folk who merged together to make a normal supernatural person. Well, a little more, a little more than normal supernatural person, a higher level supernatural base. But with the, with the robot gestalt, you can have five completely functional superhero robots who form to go together and form a super powerful demigod robot. <laughs> now, of course, there's always going to be some kind of uh, uh, limitation, like, like Ultraman only lasts five minutes or, or, uh, or uh, you know now you you are are minus and something else or whatever. There, there's always going to be limiters on it, but still, it's cool. It's cool. Make Gestalt cool again. This well, yeah, it, I, I remember cool. when I covered those cool. Power Books. I covered one and three together, and I liked those. And I seem to remember I didn't really like Power Book number two much. No, it didn't be because it, it was it was mostly this idea of of the of the Power Gestalt sucks. And then we have uh, Beyond the Supernatural, an adventure, Trouble in the Midwest. Uh, again, I'm not going to go over adventures because that would ruin the adventure. I'm not going to do that. Now, it is a Beyond the Supernatural. So it is a lower level uh, X-Files type deal with, with magic with magic, you know, thrown in. Super, supernatural stuff thrown in there. 
And uh, it is it is really and I want to talk about it a little bit because, you know, October, you know, if, oh, if you that reminds make, me when you're done. Let me bring up the Kevin thing. I will. If if if, if you want to make a, a, a three, a one, one to three uh, day campaign for Halloween, this this would be a good one because Beyond the Supernatural is is an excellent palladium horror type adventure. You can do that really well. So this is a good adventure. Get it. Then it's, we have another fun. adventure, Dark Consequences. Again, more more uh, uh, Halloween fuel. And uh, this one I didn't think was as good as Trouble in the Midwest, but um, the the Dark Consequences is named that because you have to make choices. And the choices in this are the best of bad choices. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's you have to make a choice, but none of them are good. And does you know can can you and your party live with these choices that was pretty good and uh a nightbane rpg uh optional fringe group for for nightbane okay nightbane i i like nightbane and i hate nightbane at the same time the the main book is great the idea is great the setting is great the powers are great the nightbane i think they're great but every other book after that has sucked oh astral space sucks sucks uh why does it suck? night bane some night bane uh you know i'm I'm a night bane isk you know like shut up dude stop it this one is is uh is the militia groups after the world has been af after after dark day when the world was taken over and the, and the, the government is getting more and more authoritarian how do the fringe groups respond how do the militias respond how do the, you know, sons of Liberty or whatever, how, how are they, are they going to buckle or are they going to go underground and go super, super radical? Guess what? Super, super radical was the answer. Yes. If, 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 if you think a fringe militia group is going to give up because the government got too powerful. No, no, that's, that's the wrong answer. And what happened is the CIA, FBI, NSA, they all went underground be because the, the, the government canceled their organizations, but they all had files on all the fringe groups. And so they made contact with all the fringe groups and some of them they actually convinced to help them out. You scratch my back, I scratch yours type thing. You were really bad at being secret, which is why I know where all of your bases are, says the CIA to the fringe group. But the fringe group <laughs> says, hey, but you are really bad at, at just open government defiance and blowing shit up for what seems like no reason. We could learn from each other because both skills are now necessary. So this one, this one was good. I like this one. This was nice. Then we have another common strip, the, the Lone done. Star comic strip. Since those three oh. are all themed kind of Halloween stuff. Sure. Sure. I, I do want to let people know there are two in there for Beyond the Supernatural and one for Nightbane. That's great. Uh, this video is going to post tomorrow, which is Monday. So if you're watching mm -hmm. this on Monday, hi. Uh, this upcoming Saturday, we two videos released, and then Sunday, two more videos released. Kevin was on last Friday uh, to talk about how to run a Halloween one shot. And of course, he specifically talked about Beyond the Supernatural quite a bit, a little bit of Night Bane, a little bit of Dead Rain as well. So if you want to hear from Kevin himself how he does his one shots for Halloween, along with a couple other panelists that were all great, check that out. Uh, I think it's perfect timing for this, and you'll see those pop on Saturday. Two videos on Saturday, two videos on Sunday. Sweet. All right, uh, page 57, we have the, the Lone Star comic strip. Again, not don't really go over common strips because nothing really do there. But our third uh, segment is going to be the Territory Ours No Part 2 of 2. I did Part 1. Now we're doing Part 2. Now the Part 2 is going to be more about the, the politics and uh, friends and enemies that Ours No has. And, and how to use the city of Ours No in your greater campaign. This one right here, Riffs. The environment of space. This one <laughs> I love and hate. Again? <laughs> as well. Again. Because uh, this is only useful if you are not playing on Earth. Obviously, you're not getting into space if you're on Rift's Earth. It's not happening. And if your game master allows it, he's doing it wrong. So you have to be phase world-ish on this one. 
And phase world's already overpowered. You don't need more overpowered. This one is, uh, you have a couple of OCCs that use space magic. And no, I'm not talking about Jedi. This is, these are some of the spells, okay? Hang on to your butts. There is a spell called Cosmic Armor. Now, <laughs> what it does is allows you to be a Cosmo Knight. You can exist completely in the in the vacuum of space. You have armor that is 200 mega damage worth of worth of armor, and you take one tenth damage from all energy weapons. A couple of more spells, like I don't know, luminal and subluminal flight, which they have, and you're a full on Cosmo Knight. Aren't those in the Aliens Unlimited book? I thought I covered powers like that in like the Galaxy Guide. Mm, not nothing that turned you into a Cosmo Knight because that's messed that's... up. But yeah, there there's a spell so you can exist in space. There's a spell to where you can fly in space at Mach 20. And then there's a spell where you can go faster than light. There's spells where you can teleport from planet to planet. There's, there's spells where it allows you to lift off and land on a planet. So if you want to just be a child of space, become a celestial mage. You can do all that. Again, I think it's OP way too much. It's very, it's for a very, very niche campaign. So there's no point in going into it. I just want to tell you that, hey, if you want to be a Cosmo Knight and you have a dumb game master, let, let, uh, get, get him to let you take cosmic armor as a spell. And we have Hammer of the Forge, which is another story. And then that is it. Yes, that is that is the entire book. So we are going to go over the territory of Arzno, but first we're going to go over the uh, the Palladium Changeling Metamorph. That's what's going to be next. So stay tuned for that. And if you're watching this on Memorex, which means you're watching it on Monday or later, uh, it's going to be in two days. And in yeah. five days, then we'll have the Arzno. So what do we have for comments? Start a couple here. Uh, 9.5 was not April Fool's edition. It's the best edition of how to play Palladium books. I'm I'm with that. I agree. It added, it added a lot of interesting features that I think everybody can use in this game. Like, I just don't... I mean, the joke was obviously that they fooled Wayne with it. Yeah, exactly. That was the joke. And, you know, good good joke, right? Awesome. It also explains why it didn't have a cover. I get that as well. You know. Yeah, yeah. You'd be like, "Why am I? Why are my artists doing things I have not asked them to do?" Yeah, I didn't pay them for this. So I think shots fired on this one. And I Monopoly. say this, huh? Sh he's a Monopoly master. Uh, I don't know. Uh, have you played Heathen Dog? <laughs> I know somebody who has, and I'm going to put the link in chat right now. If you want to see me slowly degrade, this has come up a couple times in a couple weeks now. Yeah. If you want you to see me slowly, monopoly, it did not go well. See me fade away into nothingness. So the Harry Potter birdie beats whatever the hell those stupid uh, the, the, jelly beans the, the are called. Jelly bean things, yeah. With like puke flavor and earwax grass flavor and, and grass and pepper and, and vomit and all this other. Every time I had to give him a property, or uh, no, every time I owed him money. I had to eat a bean. Yeah, and a you'll see that I started off doing fairly well. And then I did not. Those beans really get you. So there you go. There's a link to that video in chat. Don't leave there now, but uh, you know, or put it in another tab and you can watch it later. I have all the beans timestamps. So if you don't want to watch, you know, entirety of us playing Monopoly, I get that. Go to the timestamps and watch me slowly degrade into <laughs> to nothingness. But uh, yeah, there we go. He, he streamed Monopoly yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah, there, there, there is, there is a way to play Monopoly. You're absolutely right. There is a way to play Monopoly. There, there are, there are uh, places where most people land on. Um, yeah. After you pass go or after you get out of jail, you're more likely to land here and here and here, and you get those properties. You, you know, bribe, cheat, and steal to get those properties. Um, uh, what is it like? Three houses, no hotels. Hotels are dumb. Stuff like that. Yeah, there, there's, there's, there's tactics. What else we have? And then, oh, space magic. 
That becomes canon in Fleets of the Three Galaxies book. The magic, not the OCCs. Okay, the, the magic is really, really OP. I'm telling you right now, man. The the, the magic is, if you're playing a space campaign, this the, the space magic is basically win buttons. Could you not use that space magic in Mutants in Orbit? No, you could. As long as you're in space. You can use you can use all the space magic. There are some there 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 are many of the space magics that say can only be used in space. And it defines in space as not in the atmosphere of a planet or planetoid, which means space station, fair game. Spaceship, fair game. I think that would I don't know, uh, from what I understand of the Rift's por portion of Mutants in Orbit, I think I'd have to give a hard no to that one. Yeah. But All right. Well, with that, uh, we look forward to a uh, change thing. Was it Metamorphs coming up in the next segment and or the next video, which will pop on Wednesday? And I uh, look forward to seeing everybody there. Please like, subscribe, and share. And leave a comment.